Cody doing already have a kind of bad of bad name, you understand? And he's not making it better. And I want them to play my game. You know, I can't play with Phil's game. You know, I can't play with Brenda's game. Now, do you believe in your heart, when you think about competing, obviously, and prepping for this 2020 Mr. Olympia, do you believe that you can win it? Yeah, I do. I like Otherwise, that. I yeah. wouldn't even put so much effort into it, man. <laughs> yeah. Before, back in the days, like, I never thought that anybody could do it. Two years later, you know, three years later, in 2017, I came back, and that's when I placed third, and I told Ma, Phil is beatable. <laughs> What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and today I have the privilege to be joined by your 2019 runner-up at the Mr. Olympia and your 2020 Arnold Classic champion. I'm pleased to welcome William Bonac to Desktop Bodybuilding. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Thank you. Thank you for the invite as well. Man, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, you're obviously one of the guys I've wanted to have on the channel for a while. I've interviewed a few of the top, other top guys, but you're a guy that... You know, I really like your personality because you come out, you say it how it is, you're not afraid to you know, step on toes <laughs> yeah. or anything like that. And it's um it makes bodybuilding entertaining. So I really want to um, yeah. say I appreciate it. Oh, well. I found <laughs> out you. that I suppose you really burst onto the scene in my eyes at least in 2004, I think it was, when you did the Australian Pro, you competed against Sean Roden there. And I remember your coach at the time, Neil Hill, was you know yelling out for you. And then Chris Aceto mm. was yelling out for Sean Roden. It was a really a tight battle, which many people weren't expecting going into that show because you had, I think you had Branch yeah. Warren, Evan Santipani, some other really yeah. great bodybuilders and you really made your mark there. So let me know, yeah. did you think you maybe won that show? And I suppose, is that the- um, that really to, to be show? honest, to be honest, I was like, I was happy that I even like played second behind Sean Roden, you know, because yeah. uh, at that time he was, you know, the rising star, you know? So for me to be like second behind him, that was already like an achievement to me, you know, because that was like my second open show, you know? So it was like a big achievement for me already, you know, to be there and uh, to be second behind Sean Roden and to be able to be Branch, uh, Everson, Tobani, you know, and uh, many other guys that I thought that I couldn't beat, you know? So yeah, I didn't Absolutely. expect to win. And this is um, some photos, I think people can see it on the screen now, of you at that yeah. show. And you really look like phenomenal, like seeing you in person. And I say this in a lot of my videos as well. Seeing your physique in person is a lot different to some other people. And you're actually more impressive in person, in my opinion. Have you heard that before? Yes, yes, yes. I hear it even from my trading partner. Every time when we do like posing and we take pictures and they'd be like, the pictures doesn't do you good, man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because when I look back at the photos and while your photos look, uh, insane i actually thought i had you winning that show so and i love sean Roden's yeah. physique too so it was um definitely a, a shock for me and a shock for i think everyone else that was actually at the contest now let's discuss your injury because you had that going into last year's olympia you're still good enough to finish second behind brandon curry which was insanely yeah. impressive and you two really had the best two years out of any bodybuilder on the planet now you had an injury you had i think it was a hernia that was actually in your back so tell me a little bit about that and how that's doing now yeah, so it was a kind, of, it was a hernia, um, and it was like um, um, pushing in my back, and it was like pushing a nerve, you know. And that nerve goes to my leg, to the side of my leg, you know, um, and it goes down, and it comes inside my leg again. So uh, there was like almost no blood flowing through it as well. Wow. You know, so yes, yeah, so it kind of got blocked, you know. So I couldn't, um, I had no uh, mind connection with my legs anymore. You know, like for for instance, uh, leg press. I couldn't do leg press. If I did a leg press, uh, maybe like with one plate, um, and then I could only press with my right leg. So all the weight, all the tension, you know, all the pump was in my right leg, and my left leg was just dead. You know, so um, I, I still, you know, force it, you know, to train it, you know, with my training partner, and uh, like uh, very light, light. And uh, uh, after the Olympia, we keep working. I didn't miss a day of a uh, leg workout. Um, we worked really hard on it. Uh, at times, I even trained like a lot of one leg. So normally, you know, like even for the leg press, I would do like one leg only, you know, so I can, you know, work on the left leg, you know, to make it stronger again. And uh, my physio told me uh, that time before I did the Arnold Classic 220, 
he told me, I, I asked him, is it possible for me to um, be ready for that show? And he told me like, you can do that show, but you won't be 100%. Yeah. And so, uh, you finished second at the Olympia. And now I can see obviously here on your um, actual Instagram, you posted this up and there really is yes. no difference. So which leg was the injured leg? The injured leg was the left leg. So the left leg from me. So yeah. okay, yes, from my point of view is the right one. So for me is the le left leg from where I, I'm standing, my left leg. Yeah, for sure. And your legs are looking great now. So they really, I suppose, yeah. just bounce back. So do you feel that maybe if your leg, if you didn't have this hernia, you didn't have this issue last year, do you feel maybe you would have won the 2019 Mr. Olympia? Um, it's hard to say, you know, but I think that, uh, it will be a different story, maybe. Um, let, let's say we would have the, uh, a second, let's say a second 219 Arnold Classic. Yep, yep, sure. So you yes, had that's the way right I right to be Arnold Classic? Yes. Wow. Yes, yes. So it happened like, I think, uh, nine weeks out. Or no, I'm sorry, about five, six weeks out. Yes. Yep. Because you looked phenomenal yes. there. And I'll bring up some video as well, because that was a really, really great show for you. And it was a real battle between you and Brandon Curry. Did you feel like you won that show? Because it was obviously- No, <laughs> no, no. I didn't, I didn't feel like, you know, of course, with some points, I thought like, okay, I did better than him, you know, like uh, if it comes on condition, but with size and, and it, it just, you know, the total package, you know, it, it was when I look at the pictures as well, you know, of course you want to win, you know, but when I look at the pictures as well from the Olympia, I was like, okay, you know, Brandon is from Brandon. But with the Arnold, I was like, hmm, you know, it could have been both. You know, it's just what the judges prefer that day. Yeah, you know, so very, very with close. the Arnold, yeah, with the Arnold, you know, it was like, in my opinion, like, yeah, you know, it's, it's what the judges prefer at that moment. You know, it could have been me, you know, it could have been, yeah, it was Brandon, but it could have been, you know, either one of us, you know, so yeah yeah it's a great contest yeah. now you were working yeah. i believe at the time for that 2019 arnold classic with neil hill that was your coach at the yes. time now you guys had a pretty public i suppose breakup um in terms of yeah. being a coach and whatnot as well now how's it been prepping by yourself versus prepping with neil hill because i i mean are you totally prepping prepping by yourself or do you have a, a bit someone that watches i have i have i have, I have you know people in my corner watching me you know um you know, but most of the thing, you know, I do it by myself and, um, you know, with, 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 with things that I'm not so good at, you know, I have people who are like, you know, checking me and, you know, seeing like, okay, this is what you're supposed to do, you know, or, hey, maybe we can add this one and, you know, and take this one out, you know, so I have, I have some people in my corner. Yes, I do. For yeah. sure. And do you feel like you'd be able to do better without a coach or is it pretty much the same? I, I, I think... Uh, I, I'm doing better without a coach. You know, Neil was a great coach. I can't take that from him, you know, because, uh, you know, he helped me to, to, to get where I, where I am today, you know. So um, uh, props to him as well, you know, despite our differences. You know, I, I think that um, because I'm, I'm, I'm a guy, it, it, takes, it takes a while to give my trust to someone, you understand? You know, because it's, it's still my body and my health, you understand? And uh, it took a while before I trusted Neil with that. You know, so for me to join with another coach, it won't happen. Yeah, no, sure. it won't happen because it will take me another two years to to gain that trust again. And by that time, it's like almost the ending of my career. You know, so yes, I don't think sure. that will happen. And, and by now, the way I'm doing things is like I do everything um, according to my feeling and according to how I look. You know, so um, and I have also like my trainer's partner Kendrick. You know, he's like my second eye. You know, so um, yeah, I think it's just the mistake and the bad luck that I had last year uh, for the Olympia. Um, otherwise, it would have been a different story. You yeah. Know? So sure. if the injury and um, um, if we injury free and uh, we go to this Olympia, I think it's going to be even know that Phil will come back. I think it's going to be a big battle. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely going to be a battle because, you know, obviously yourself and Brandon Curry were so close last year at two contests. So it's going to be yeah. a battle this time around for sure. Is there anything you're doing different this prep compared to past preps? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I haven't done cardio since I started my prep like 16 weeks out. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. And normally, you know, I start like with my cardio about 16 weeks out, 
you know, like 15 minutes and then build it up to about like 30 minutes. The highest is like 40 minutes. And uh, this prep, I haven't done even one cardio yet, you know, and uh, I'm still waiting till I'm ready, you know, right. to do the cardio. So right now it's not needed. So, yeah. This, you feel that's keeping I'm, you a bit bigger? At least. Believe me, man, I, I'm, 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 I'm way much bigger than I'm supposed to be. <laughs> And uh, still, still lean, you know. So, um, you know, this is really helping, you know. So it's just because all the times when we did like uh, my prep, my mistake was um, I was I, like, let's say four weeks out, I was already ready, like stage ready, you know. Sometimes three weeks out, I'm stage ready, you know. So, and it's like three weeks, you know, and it takes long. So three weeks time, I have to do like my um, my how you say that um my loading you know so i start loading about three to four weeks out already you know that's what i did with my last prep you know and that's too much you know so uh so this time i try to keep as full as possible you know and then if needed i can join the cardio last two weeks last three weeks out you know so but right now it's not needed sure now, something that's been happening in bodybuilding just lately, if something came up about Sean Ray's commentary about some of these contests. I don't know if you saw the controversy uh, around that. About Sean Roden? No, Sean Ray. Sean Ray? What, what's yeah. what, I didn't even know. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I thought you might have seen it. So basically, there's been a petition started to have Sean Ray not do the commentary because people think he's too negative and what's like, what not towards the competitors. Bro, now, what's um, your thoughts on Sean Ray and his commentary? Listen, I'm... I'm to be honest, you know, like I have nothing like bad against Sean Ray, like the person, you know, Sean Ray, uh, the bodybuilder Sean Ray. In fact, I like the way he, you know, he looked back in the days, you know, and his performance is just, you know, it's like he's so negative. It's, you know, he's so negative with a lot of stuff. And, and, and in my opinion, if he likes you, you understand, and you on stage, you know, he will like, you know, talk you into heaven you understand and if it's you know the opposite you understand he will break you you understand yeah. and i don't think like you know like it's the same thing with a jerk you can't have a favor favorite favorite ones you know on stage and that kind of stuff you know you have to be independent when it comes to that you know so in my opinion um, I, I i i think the same thing too yeah i, I would have, anyone i, I would have I would have signed it too, you know, and I have nothing against him. It's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's also with me. I know a lot of times that he said a lot of negative stuff about me, that I was being aggressive at the uh, press conference. Aggressive? I'm just talking out my heart about my, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the son of my, of, of, of the mother of my son, you know. So uh, so that, that I never said anything about it, you know, but it just, I, I, it, I kept it in mind, and each time I've seen stuff from um, from Sean coming, you know, also with the uh, situation with Dexter, um, yeah. it's it's always always there's something with this guy. You understand? And uh, instead of like, I don't know, you know, instead of like promoting bodybuilding, you know, in such a way that he knows because he's been a pioneer. You can see him as a pioneer. You understand? So he should give the example, the right example. You understand? And I don't think he's doing that correct you know and i don't think you should be a commentator you should have someone independent someone who knows about bodybuilding as well but independent no favorites you understand you know and yeah do your job you know and stop that negative stuff and always this always that you know each time she attacks somebody and then yeah it's too much man <laughs> yeah absolutely you yeah that shit. You have, yes because bodybuilding already have a kind of bad of bad name you understand and he's not making it better you know by doing the stuff and saying the stuff that he says. Of course, you have a free, free opinion. You can say whatever you want, you know, but you have to, as a pioneer, you know, as a leader, you know, because that's how many see him, you know. You know, you should think with what you do and say, you know, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Is there someone you'd like to see as a commentator, like maybe like a Jay Cutler or someone like that? I would love to see, yes, definitely. Same. You know, <laughs> that's what, the, but that's how it should go, you know, like. It's, it's nothing against Sean once again, you know, but I should, I think like, and also with sometimes to get other people who has, who have never been a pro before, never done a pro show before, but they're still uh, commentators, you understand? I'm like, okay, you know, I, I mean, like, 
choose someone like Jay, you understand? Someone like Lee Henny, you know, someone yeah. like, you know, uh, uh, Lila Brada, you know, let those guys, you know, be a commentator because they know about the sports, you understand? They've been there, you understand? They've been leading before us. Sean as well, you know, only he's just not representing it well, in my opinion, you know, so. Yep. Yeah. And I suppose on that as well, because you've obviously got YouTubers now, like I'm one of them, like being honest, I'm, I'm you know, a YouTuber that talks about bodybuilding and whatnot, but I try to give yeah. an unbiased opinion, I suppose, most of the time and yeah. try to keep it pretty. I, I know, I know. I, I, I've, I've seen your videos a few times. Oh, thank well, you, bro. So, yeah. um, but yeah, yeah, I try to keep it as positive as possible, but obviously still talking about the news that comes in and everything that happens. Yeah. But um, what do you think about, I suppose, you had your run-in, obviously, with Lou Marco back when he was doing it, and he yeah. sort of disappeared now, but he said you weren't going to win another show, yeah. but that was wrong. Yeah. But um, I suppose, what do you think about, I suppose, bodybuilding YouTubers in general, and is there any that you, I suppose, don't like or like in particular? Yeah, it's, 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 it's like I said, um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's all the negative talking, you know, uh, people trying to make money out of bodybuilders, you know, mm. and... Listen, if you if you like if you promote bodybuilding in such a good way, in a positive way, of course, sometimes some negative stuff happens. You know, uh, so somebody might you know die or you know whatsoever. You know, of course, you have to address that as well. You know, but um, there are some guys. They just it's like they only make the, the channel. You know, to to kick bodybuilding down. You understand? It's like to throw mud at bodybuilders. You know and and I don't think that's the way. If you want to do that, you know, choose another sport and understand, but don't be like, you know, bodybuilding fan while you're trying to throw mud at bodybuilders, you know, so, and, and for us, you know, listen, this is a job for us as well, you know, and it's already tough for us enough with the social media and um, uh, people favoring this one and that one, you know, uh, getting assaulted by other fans and that's that kind of stuff, you know, we are still humans, you understand, and it still touch us, you know, so, you know, that's the negative stuff that you, that's what I mean, to be honest. <laughs> the last time that I watched, you know, like YouTube videos is a while. In my prep, I shut everything down. Good idea. <laughs> so I don't, I don't even see what's going on. I don't, that's why when you ask me about it, I don't even know. I don't see what's yeah. going on. So once and then, you understand, I see like uh, an strength and you desktop passing by and also the other guy, Fancy Fitness. You know, so once and then, I watch, you know, like I don't even play on it. I just you know, watch, you know, what's going on a little bit. Yep. And then I just scroll on because I just don't want to put myself into it. I just want to focus on my prep. You understand? Not, you know, knowing what people think of, about me or what people think, you know, about this. And, um, um, you know, some people say, oh, I'll place this guy in top six. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to keep myself busy with it. Yeah. Just focus you don't explain on me. your mind. You understand? Yeah. You know, so, Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Exactly. And exactly. Like exactly. LeBron James, he, he does the same thing. When the NBA playoffs start, he he shuts down or he doesn't post on social media, he tries not to look on it. So yeah. he does sort of the same yeah. thing, I suppose. It's just so you get that yeah. tunnel vision yeah. and you're focused on the Olympia yeah. and you're not focused on those outside, I suppose, noises, yeah. which is a yeah. good bit of advice, I suppose, for younger competitors yeah. and anyone that's competing, I suppose, to try to make yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's my, you know, because it's a lot of negative stuff, you know, people you know, talking so much shit, so much negative stuff, throwing mud at people. Yeah, man. It's, for me, uh, same thing what happened with me and Louis Marco. I, I, to be honest, I even liked that guy, you know, until he started, and I even, until he started using my name to, to, to throw, to throw at other bodybuilders, you know, who I respected, you understand? Okay, yep. I was like, listen, you know, and we even talk like, you know, like behind, you know, social media behind the thing we talk, you know, through DMs, you know, explain to the guy, like, listen, just don't use my name, you understand, to throw mud at these guys, you know, what you think that's cool, you know, because he favored me as well, you know, I know that, you understand, but just don't use me to throw mud, you understand, at these other guys, you know, because, uh, you know, it's, it's, it looks, it's, it's like, if I don't say nothing about it, it's like I'm with you, you get me? Mm, it's yeah. like I stand with you, you understand with what you're saying, you know, so... And that was the issue, you know. I had nothing against the guy. It's just, I just told him, like, don't just use my name. And then, you know, he made it a whole circus thing. And, <laughs> yeah, so. For sure. Now, I want to ask you, do you think that the special invites, obviously Big Rami just got a special invite. Do you think they're mm. a good thing? Um, like, because obviously circumstances with him getting the, you know, the COVID and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Do you think it's a good thing that they have the special invites or are you against them? Ah, uh, Rami is, listen, he's been 
you know, a runner up of the Olympia before, you know, so, and at this moment, you know, we need to, you know, promote bodybuilding, uh, especially in this COVID time. Um, and, you know, Rami is, 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 he has tried to qualify it already. You know, it's not like he didn't want to, um, it's just circumstances, you know, and I know that time that I got stuck in Ghana after the Arnold's, he got stuck in, uh, I think, Dubai, you know, I think for a few months, you know, so, so imagine, you know, how difficult it is to be away from your family and, you know, just because she tried to, you know, make a living for them. So I think they should give this guy a break, man. He's been yeah. through so much, you know, missed a year of the Olympia, trying to qualify and then this and then that, you know, give this guy a break. Yeah. yeah, that's how I see it, you know. If it was up to me, they could give everybody a, a wild card, you know. That's cool. I'm good with that, man. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, how long were you stuck in Ghana yeah. for? Uh, I was about almost two months. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. So we did you have yeah. a gym to train at and everything like that? Obviously. Yeah. That 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 was that was the issue. We went there to open my gym. Oh and, yeah. Uh, build up a gym over there, so uh, we went there to uh, open up the gym. But um, <laughs> you know, it didn't work out the way we wanted, and then yeah. uh, the whole thing started with the COVID, and then uh, we were like a few days late with our flight, you know, because uh, we didn't know what knew that uh, they would shut the borders. And then uh, the time that we supposed to fly, like two days before, they shut down everything. Yeah. Were you like an we absolute even celebrity the star there? Like, excuse me? Were you like a massive celebrity and star in Ghana? Um, I, I, you know, I can't say it like that. You know, they respect me for <laughs> what I do, you understand? Yeah, yeah, they respect me for, for what I do. And then I put, you know, Ghana on the map, you know, and. Uh, you know, but other than that, yeah. And also when I went to the city, you know, you know, they showed me the love, you know, like That's cool. yeah, appreciation, you know. So yeah, I'm not saying I'm a star, you know, they have <laughs> a lot of big stars over there, you understand? So yeah. yeah. Now, do you believe in your heart, when you think about competing, obviously in prepping for this 2020 Mr. Olympia, do you believe that you can win it? Yeah, I do. Thank you. I like Otherwise, that. I yeah. wouldn't even put so much effort into it, man. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. obviously, the two, I suppose, biggest names that you're going to be challenging is Brandon Curry and Phil Heath, with Phil Heath making his comeback, seven-time Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Brandon Curry, obviously, the 2019 Mr. Olympia, and you almost beat him in 2019 as well. Yeah. Now, how do you beat, I want to go by one by one, how do you beat Phil Heath, first of all? How do I beat Phil Heath? Um, you know, I just with Phil... Um, with me, I always like don't play other people's game. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. So with Phil, you know, it's like if if I play my game, my own game, you know, if I play my own game, and they see that, and they see like, oh, you know, it's like, you know, William brought his game, they will play my game. Understand? I want them to play my game. You know, I can't play with Phil's game. You know, I can't play with Brenda's game. You know, at, at this moment, I, I knew what, um, um, you know, what I needed to, I need, I know what I needed to do to like get at the same position as the close to Phil, you know, and between Phil and, and, and Brandon actually, yeah. you know, let me say it like that. Yeah. You know, so, and before back in the days, like I never thought that anybody could beat Phil. When I came in the scene 214, I saw Phil, I came back to home, I told my mom, because me and my mom, we good, we cool, we close, and I told my mama, this guy's unbeatable, <laughs> she was like, never say that, never say that, you know, I said, no, mom, believe me, this guy's unbeatable, two years later, you know, three years later, in 2017, I came back, and that's when I placed third, and I told ma, Phil is beatable. Yeah, and honestly, you know, I thought you should have been second there, I thought you should have been second. Yeah, thank you, man. But that was the only time that I saw for that I was like, okay, you know, from that moment, I was like, this guy is beautiful, you know. But before the time I saw him back, I'm like, wow, what, what does he do that, that, you know, that he looked like that, you know, like, you know, I was very impressed of him, you know, the first few times that I saw him, you know, and still, you know, so I know he's a dangerous threat, you know, coming to the O and uh, Brandon as well. Brandon is, 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 is Mr. O and he wants to keep his title. You understand? He want to shut the critics as well, you know, so he will do anything to keep his title, you know, and I know that, you know, but with me, I know like if I'm calm, I don't stress, I just keep doing my thing every day, you know, um, 
I'll be good, man. That's my strongest point. You know, just stay calm. You yeah. know, so, and I believe that, you know, even Phil is coming, I, I believe that I can win this Mr. O. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So. I love that. I love the confidence. Yeah. And obviously, like, you're, I believe you're in the Netherlands right now, I think. Now, uh, do you have a plan, obviously, to get to the US? Because the whole, obviously, with all yeah. the restrictions, I've been worried yeah, about you yeah. guys actually getting there. Uh, actually, we have to go to the, um, um, the Emirates, uh, stay there like two weeks in quarantine, and then from okay. there, we fly to Vegas. You know, that's the only way for us to, uh, to, to do it, because those countries, they are, you know, um, they love bodybuilding. You got a lot of um, uh, gyms over there, you know, they're still cool. active. Um, plus the restaurants, you know, a lot of diet restaurants, you know, so that's the best place for us to, uh, to stay before we go to the US. So, yeah, and are you going early yeah. this time? Yes, I have to go like um, two weeks. So, let's say first December. If, if situation do not change in the US, uh, we fly out first December and then um, uh, we leave, I think, on the uh, 16th. I think on a Tuesday, we will fly to the USA. So awesome. then we, we, we got just a few days, you know, to dry out and uh, yeah, be ready. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see it, William. Um, thank you so much for coming on Desktop Bodybuilding. I really, really appreciate it. Now, do you have any sponsors or anyone you want to thank? Um, I have some sponsors. Um, I want to thank Gorilla Wear, your know, clothing company, uh, for always sticking with me, you know, supporting me. Um, I got a new supplement sponsor. Uh, I can't mention it yet, you know, because... Uh, uh, we got one, two, three things going on, so um, yeah. we will mention it soon. Um, I might have a new sponsor as well, um, but I will mention that one as well. I think lately you have seen some posts of mine, you know, with yep. some uh, Panata equipment, you know, so uh, we got some things coming in the future as well. Yeah, their so, stuff looks awesome as well. Like, I think I've even used yeah, some stuff definitely. in the past, and it's like the best of the best. Definitely. I, I agree with you. Definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank so you so I want much. To thank them. Yeah, yeah for thank sure. you, brother. Now, thank you so much for coming on, William. That's William Bonak, the second place finisher at last year's Mr. Olympia. Can he go one better and win in 2020 like he did at the 2020 Arnold Classic? Hope so. And I hope to see him up there smashing it and in, uh, in that first call out with the likes of Brandon yeah. Curry and Phil Heath. Thank you, William Bonak. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. So that's it for my interview with William Bonak, the second place finisher of the 2019 Mr. Olympia and the winner of the 2020 Arnold Classic. He heads into this 2020 Mr. Olympia as one of the favorites. And do you think he can win? And if not, where do you think he'll actually place him at 2020 Mr. Olympia in just seven and a half weeks time? And let me know what you think about everything that William Bonak said in this interview from what he talked about with Sean Ray in the commentary to everything else as well. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you want to support this channel, head to hostile.com. So H-O-S-S-T-I-L-E.com. You can enter Zave 10. That will save you 10% off your order as well. They've got some amazing flavors and some amazing products. But honestly, the products speak for themselves. Just look at the ingredients list on there when you head to hostile.com. And obviously, like I said, use Zave 10. You'll save yourself 10% on some amazing supplements. I'm wearing a hostile cap here. We've got a bunch of great apparel and stuff as well. So make sure you check it out. And also, if you like this content, give this video a thumbs up. Smash that like button also subscribe and hit the notification bell button that way you'll be notified of every video that goes up for myself xavier wills at desktop bodybuilding and the next interview on the way is with two-time classic physique olympia champion brion ansley so make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss out on that interview because it was really a good one so that's it for myself xavier wills and william bonak we are out